Good evening, you are watching the news from the Sultanate of Iman Television. First, the headlines. A new patent by Sultan Qaboos University focuses on discovering an effective composition for the treatment of dry and wet gangrene. And with participation from worldwide experts, the third conference on obstetrics and gynaecology is launched. Those were the headlines, now the news in detail. The United States Patent Office approved a new patent by Sultan Qaboos University on discovering an effective composition for the treatment of dry and wet gangrene. The composition is a mixture of tropical herbs, camel milk and saliva. The patent is expected to limit the death rates related to gangrene, which mostly infects diabetes and artery diseases patent. The third conference on obstetrics and gynaecology was held in the Wallah of Sahar in the Governorate of North Batina under the auspices of His Excellency Dr. Ahmed bin Mohammed Asidi, Minister of Health. It witnessed participation from experts from the United States, Canada and India to exchange knowledge and expertise in this field. The conference focused on topics related to women's health and experiments in the field of embryo examination with sonar rays. It also reviewed ways of treating diseases and medical developments in this field. An annual regional conference in Muscat discussed the development of communication and public speaking skills. It was presided over by His Excellency Sheikh Saad bin Mohammed Al Madouf as Saadi, Minister of Sports Affairs. Around 400 competitors from inside and outside the Sultanate took part in the conference. The speech skills included various categories and the event is considered a great opportunity for participants to exchange knowledge and expertise in this field. It is worth mentioning that the Toastmasters International is a non-profit educational organisation that operates around 1,600 clubs worldwide in 142 countries for the purpose of helping members improve their communication, public speaking and leadership skills. With the participation of more than 38 establishments from the public and private sectors, the Ministry of Manpower organised a workshop on job employment in the Walaya of Ibra in the Governorate of North Shakia. It aimed to develop mechanisms of on-the-job training for students of the College of Technology in the Sultanate. It also sought to develop the skills of students in all majors. The workshop included two discussion sessions. The first session focused on types of training in the work market. The second session dealt with challenges facing on-the-job training and suggested solutions. China and the US ended the second day of high-stakes trade talks yesterday with big differences leaving the world's two largest economies on the brink of a trade war that could have knock-on effects on the global economy. The talks were aimed at forestalling momentum towards the looming conflict, with both sides prepared to pull the trigger on tariffs that could affect trade in billions of dollars of goods. The discussions promised a potential off-ramp for the trade conflict. US President Donald Trump has threatened to levy new tariffs on $150 billion of Chinese imports, while Beijing shot back with a list of $50 billion in targeted US goods. The countries agreed to establish a working mechanism to continue talks. The announcement followed comments by Treasury Secretary Stephen Munchen that the two sides were having very good conversations. Temporary camps were today being set up in Pakistan's southern city of Karachi as temperatures soar during a heat wave. The mercury went as high as 44 degrees Celsius and residents have been taking themselves to shady areas to try and cool down. Local authorities set up the camps in areas with high footfall to provide water and first aid services to locals. NASA's Mars InSight lander spacecraft launched today from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. It is the first interplanetary mission to ever take off from the west coast of the US. It will take more than six months for the lander to reach Mars and start its unprecedented geologic excavations. Instruments on the lander will dig deeper into Mars than ever before, nearly five meters, to take the planet's temperature. 
It will also attempt to make the first measurements of Mars quakes using a seismometer placed directly on the Martian surface. The Atlas V rocket also holds a pair of mini satellites meant to trail the spacecraft all the way to Mars. Expected regions. Extra ratio. On farms across Africa, a seemingly innocuous brown and beige caterpillar is waging a silent war devastating rural incomes and posing a major threat to the continent's food supply. Here is a report. This little caterpillar seems harmless, yet it causes great damage. In two years, the fall army worm has colonized three quarters of Africa, attacking the staple crop, maize. I lost 50% of my usual harvest, so that automatically translates into 50% of your harvest, of your, you know, less income. So you have to source from outside. And last year, the maize price hit its highest. Over 200 million farmers and their families grow maize as a cash crop. Experts fear if the worm is not contained, there could be tough times ahead. It is one of the deadliest crop pests in the world. Uh, it has a capacity to attack uh, a, a number of crop species. Maize is, of course, its major preference, and maize being the staple food crop of Africa, uh, the, there is a very serious concern about uh, the threat to food security. The fall army worm is perfectly adapted for destruction. It nestles in the leaves around the head of maize, attacking it methodically, leaving behind shredded leaves or hollowed ears of maize. Its life is relatively short, a month and a half. It turns into a moth in its last two weeks and can travel up to 100 kilometers in one night. To fight back, farmers have adopted several measures in order to try and eliminate this furious pest. Last year they used ash, uh, it worked for some, uh, even up to soil. Huh? Some farmers were putting soil in the funnel of the crop huh? and it worked for some of them. Because I think uh, it, it works with the issue of suffocation, it suffocates the pest. In the absence of a quick fix to eradicate it, researchers advocate the adoption of better agronomic practices to increase yields and compensate for losses. Still to come in our news bulletin. The third Oman skills competition concludes with the aim to provide the labour market with capable Omani cadre. Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. A report issued by Group 9 Establishment in New York in the United States pointed out that the Sultanate has several natural potentials that make it a distinguished destination for visitors and tourists from all over the world. The report added that the Sultanate enjoys a unique natural beauty representative in natural caves, waterfalls, mountains, sea beaches and vast deserts. It also said that the Sultanate is the only country in the Middle East which recorded zero on the Global Terrorism Index, pointing out that the country is open to other cultures and hospitable. The report also talked about the civilizational landmarks of Oman and its deep-rooted history. In order to encourage students to exert more efforts in their studies, the Educational Supervision Office in the Walai of Thamrat in the Governorate of Dofar held the annual honouring ceremony for the schools of the Walai. The honouring also included some teachers and educational administrators. The initiative aimed to raise competition among students and schools. The ceremony included various shows and traditional arts performed by the students of the Walai.
An honouring ceremony for 191 excelled students was held in the Walaya of Suwaik. It stressed on the efforts exerted by those students to become successful in their educational achievements and activities for the academic year 2017-2018 as well as the hard work to develop their skills in addition to motivate the administration and education cadre to achieve further success in the future. The activities of Musandam School Laboratories and Globe Environment Programme started in the Governorate of Musandam. The event came within continuous efforts to develop skills of students. It also aimed to encourage researchers and activities in schools in the field of environmental protection. It sought to create foundations for innovation and scientific research in schools through providing labs with necessary scientific equipment and tools and promote critical thinking among students. The Vocational College in the Walaya of Sib concluded the third Oman Skills competition. It witnessed a participation from around 50 competitors in various fields. The competition came within the framework to contribute in the development of the national economy and provide the labour market with capable Omani cadre. It is worth mentioning that this competition came as a preparation to participate in the upcoming Golf and International Skills competition. A discussion workshop was held in the Walaya of Masana in the Governorate of South Batana titled Cultural Production in Oman, The Situation and Ambitions. A number of writers and intellectuals took part in the event. It discussed various cultural aspects of Oman and aimed to raise awareness among all segments of society about critical thinking and cultural activities. Now for the general weather forecast around the Sultanate. Clear skies will prevail over the Sultanate with chances of low clouds and fog late at night and early morning over the coastal areas of the Arabian Sea. Winds will be north to northwesterly, light to moderate. Seas will be moderate with a maximum wave height of 2 metres. This is the Sultanate of Iman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. A new patent by Sultan Qaboos University focuses on discovering an effective composition for the treatment of dry and wet gangrene. And with participation from worldwide experts, the third conference on obstetrics and gynaecology is launched. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the newsroom and the studios, it's good night.